Watch what happens when Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth seeks unanimous consent on a bill to protect IVF. Unanimous consent means that if there are no objections, this bill can proceed. But of course, Tammy Duckworth called the bluff of these MAGA Republicans who are the reason why you have the Supreme Court ruling from South Carolina, which basically ruled that an embryo is the same as a child, which effectively shut down IVF clinics in South Carolina. And that's what these MAGA Republicans want to bring across the United States. Watch what happens here when Democrats call the bluff of MAGA Republicans. Play the clip. Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions be discharged from further consideration of S3612 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. Further, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed and the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Reserving the right to object. The Senator from Mississippi. Madam President, I support the ability for mothers and fathers to have total access to IVF and bringing new life into the world. I also believe human life should be protected. These are not mutually exclusive. Let's be clear about what the Alabama case is about. This was a case brought by families whose human embryos were killed when an unauthorized individual walked into the fertility clinic through an unsecured door, removed several human embryos, and dropped them, causing their deaths. The court's holding in favor of the parents found that these frozen human embryos are children under Alabama law. It did not ban IVF, nor has any state banned IVF. The bill before us today is a vast overreach that is full of poison pills that go way too far, far beyond ensuring legal access to IVF. And again, the MAGA Republicans don't want you to see this. What they want you to see is when they pretend to introduce the bill to codify protections for IVF, right? They don't want to show you clips like this. This is Anna Paulina Luna. MAGA Republican withdrawing her co-sponsorship of a bill that would codify and protect IVF treatment. Play the clip. For what purpose does a gentlewoman from Florida seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I hereby remove my name as a co-sponsor of House Resolution 7056. So ordered. But no, people like Nancy Mace, another MAGA Republican, they want their soundbite and they want to let you, they want to make people pretend that they care about the issues when Nancy Mace attached her name to legislation that would ban IVF. But here's what Nancy Mace wanted to say today. Play the clip. Ever since then, I've become very passionate about protecting women, about protecting their rights, protecting access to IVF, et cetera. And the one thing I want to say today, because I have co-sponsored legislation and resolutions by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, as it relates to contraception, as it relates to contraceptives, as it relates to providing information and protecting IVF, and yet not a single one of them, because they were Democrats, got criticized for the, le the legislation. Yet today, I'm trying to work with members on both sides of the aisle together to condemn the ruling in Alabama, to sh express our sentiment and express our support for IVS, IVF access for women all across the country. So when a Republican does it, it should be equally supported by the corporate media, but apparently it's not. Hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Let me show you this clip right here of MAGA Mike Johnson. And here, MAGA Mike Johnson, the same way you've got the MAGA Republicans trying to just, it's all an op. They all just want to lie. Oh yeah, we're for IVF, except objection. We're not going to let you codify it. And we're going to appoint people to the Supreme Court in different states who are going to uh, ultimately try to uh, pre preclude and block IVF. Here's MAGA Mike who literally killed a bipartisan border deal because Donald Trump told him, kill the strongest border deal because Trump wants to run on whining about the border. Can you imagine that? He wants to run, I can't because it's Donald Trump. He wants to run on causing us pain 
and then think we're stupid? Here's MAGA Mike saying, the border, the border. Here, play this clip. And that's what I did yesterday. I reminded the president and all involved that the number one issue in America is that open border, the catastrophe that we have. And here's MAGA Mike saying, Trump built the wall. Trump too. We're not dumb, MAGA Mike. Play this clip. Biden took office. You know, President Trump had such a, there was such a distinction between these two leaders. You know, he built the wall. He oh, and here is kind of MAGA Mike's God complex where he's like, you know, he thinks he's like Moses, right? And he's like, I'm on an island all by myself. And it's very lonely. It's very lonely on this island. Very lonely. Here, watch this. Just the whining. Play this clip. House, Mike Johnson of Louisiana. Mr. Speaker, thank you for being with us. Um, first reports were that they ganged up on you yesterday. Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, and Chuck Schumer. Any truth to that? Well, the reports are pretty accurate. They said that I was um, on an island by myself and it was me versus everyone else in the room. What, what the liberal media doesn't understand, Sean, is that if you're here in Washington and you're described as a leader that's on an island by themselves, it probably means you're standing with the American people. And that's what I did yesterday. I remind Mega Mike, it's not that you're on an island by yourself. It's that you're basically in Russia. You, Donald Trump, and the MAGA Republican faction of the Republican Party, which is controlling the party right now, what y'all want to do is just help Vladimir Putin. You want to destroy our country from within and not pass a bipartisan border deal. You want to create problems. You want to not fund Ukraine. So it's not about being an island. It's frankly, it's about being a traitor when you really kind of break it down. Oh, this is going to be the new co-chair of the RNC. Lara Trump, everybody. She's the new going to be the new co-chair of the RNC as of now. And here... Pickable. Here is Lara Trump saying that Donald Trump would never sign his name to stimulus checks. Play the clip. Ed, what are the Democrats doing? They are paying liberal students to register more liberal students with taxpayer money. Imagine if Donald Trump, while president, impacted an election and influenced voters with taxpayer money. We know the impeachment papers would already be drawn up and signed. Yeah. But could Jesse, you imagine, this is Lara, could you? Midas Touch is brought to you by bookshop.org. You may be watching or listening to our show right now, but are you reading enough? It's time to dive back into books and conquer that reading goal you set for yourself this year with bookshop.org. There are so many great books out right now that help you make sense of this moment. Or maybe you just want to get away from the political noise and unwind with a good novel. Bookshop.org has just the book you're looking for. Bookshop.org is unapologetically anti-Amazon. Why? Because when you purchase from bookshop.org, you're supporting local independent bookstores so they'll be around for all of us to enjoy in the future. They're committed to helping independent bookstores not just survive, but thrive and continue to foster culture, curiosity, and a love of reading in your community. Bookshop.org has raised over $30 million from local bookstores. You can even pick which bookstore you want to support, whether it's your local bookstore or your hometown favorite. Bookshop.org is truly for everyone who loves to read and knows the power of a good book. I just finished reading The Attributes, 25 Hidden Drivers of Optimal Performance by Rich Devinney, and I cannot recommend it enough. This is one of Bookshop.org's bestsellers, and after reading through it, I totally understand why. Start feeling good about where you buy books. Use code MIDAS to get 10% off your next order at bookshop.org. That's code MIDAS, M-E-I-D-A-S, to get 10% off at bookshop.org. You know who didn't sign their name on stimulus checks? President Biden, who did direct deposit to make sure people actually got the money that they needed when President Biden took office. But you know who delayed stimulus checks to people during COVID? Because he wanted his name to go on the checks. Donald Trump, you know, we've got receipts. Play the clip. Why did you have your name added to these coronavirus relief checks? Well, I don't know too much about it, but I understand my name is there. Uh, I don't know where they're going, how they're going. I do understand it's not delaying anything. And I'm satisfied with that. I don't, I don't imagine it's a big deal. I'm sure people will be very happy to get a big, fat, beautiful check and my name is on it. Yeah, go ahead, please. And here is Jen Psaki talking about how um, President Biden would not do that when she was the press secretary. Play the clip. On whether or not he wants his signature on there like former President Trump demanded. 
Well, we are we are doing everything in our power to expedite the payments and not delay them, which is why the president's name will not appear on the memo line of this round of stimulus checks. Uh, the checks will be signed by a career official at the Bureau of Fiscal Service. This is not about him. This is about the American people getting relief, all almost 160 million of them. So did he did not want his name to appear on the checks? He didn't think that was a priority or a necessary step. His focus was on getting them out as quickly as possible. So here's uh, President Biden today when, of course, after exceeding all expectations in Michigan while Donald Trump underperformed, the media wants to ask President Biden, are you old? Are you worried? What do you say to people about your health, your age? I mean, that's all the media wants to talk about. Not that he's handling things in a works been like that. The media is such trash. I'm sorry if I annoy you, but I keep on saying that the media is such trash. I mean, that's why we're ultimately building this community together. But anyway, play this clip of President Biden today who just laughs at them. Play this clip. <laughs> Let me show you this too. This is superstar Democratic Governor Gretchen. Whitmer right here, here, play this clip. Does that undercut the arguments by Democrats that Republicans are going after in vitro fertilization? Hell no, it does not. I mean, we've always known that with the appointments that Donald Trump made to the United States Supreme Court, that IVF, that a woman's ability to make her own decisions about her body, and all the panoply of things that come from that were in jeopardy. And so this Alabama Supreme Court ruling is a natural extension of that. And that's exactly why even in a state like Michigan, where we've made huge strides in protecting the right to reproductive freedom, is still very much at risk with a prospect of a second Trump term. And here's Democratic Senator uh, Tammy Duckworth. One more time, play this clip. That's the kind of extremism we're talking about here. That's the level of cruelty that we're facing. That's the kind of future we're fighting to prevent, where frozen embryos have more rights than the women who would carry them. Let's be clear about what led to this moment. The overturning of Roe is what made last week's ruling even possible, as it stripped women of a constitutional right transferring the power to decide whether or when to start families from us to politicians in state houses across the country. Donald Trump is the one who brags about taking down Roe v. Wade. Donald Trump is the one who acts as if that's something to be proud of. So while it may now be convenient for him to claim that he had nothing to do with what happened in Alabama, we know the truth. IVF is at risk because of him. He is to blame, him and every other GOP official who shamelessly kisses his ring, proving with every word they say that they care more about protecting his poll numbers than protecting Americans' freedoms. And finally, let me share this with you. This is Democratic Congress member Tom Swazi, who uh, on Wednesday was finally sworn in. Play this clip. He, he's won New York's third congressional district. Play this clip. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on the night of my election victory, I promised the people of Long Island and Queens I would deliver a simple message to this chamber. Wake up. The people are sick and tired of the finger pointing and the petty partisan bickering. They want us to work together. They want you guys to work together, too. What are you doing? You're supposed to be clapping for that. Well, that's what leadership sounds like. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Thanks for watching. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.